My name is David Turner and we're here at the uh, trade show in Las Vegas, Interbike. Uh, we're going to go through the line a little bit with uh, MTBR. Uh, it's good to uh, say hi to everybody. Um, starting with the DHR, there's nothing uh, technically changed with the DHR. The bike was new in 2011, so from going forward to 2012, all we did was add the, the green anodizing. Uh, we played a little bit with it earlier this year and it sold uh, really well. Um, we only had a few of them, but uh, everybody loved them and they looked really good in, uh, in person. Green's one of those colors that you're either loving it and hating it, but it seems like there's a lot of people loving it. Um, I think it's kind of like, goes with the rest of our anodized colors and laser etching. It's uh, kind of a subdue to bling, um, which kind of goes with Turner Bikes. Nothing really uh, different here. Um, moving over to the five spot. The, uh, uh, just more subtle refinements. The, the bike's got a 67.7 uh, degree head angle with the 150 travel fork. A lot of guys are running with a 36 class fork on it, which of course knocks a full degree out of it uh, if you use the external headset. The uh, head tube is still a 44 millimeter, so you can use a tapered steer tube with it. For 2012, we uh, upgraded the cable control system from the zip ties that we've used for uh, quite a long time in the past to this. Now guys can't uh, can't screw it up, can't cut their knuckles on badly cut zip ties. Uh, keeps them nice and tight with the, the little clamps here. And then on the rear end, we're using you know little nylon loop straps, which allow some flexibility. You know as the derailleur moves, this uh, keeps it out of the chain and the uh, all that stuff. But it, it also is got a little bit of flex. Um, one of the things we did you can't see from this side, but on the five spot we added the ISCG tabs. They're uh, welded on. They're inset away from the uh, the little ring. A lot of people now are running the. Uh, Two ring chain guide systems, you know, uh, MRP, E13, uh, it seems like everybody's making something for a two ring system. Um, so we wanted to be able to have that. The five spot, my wife and I have done Downeyville numerous times. Uh, Super Enduro is getting really popular in Europe, and even in the UK. You know, it's a multi run format where you're timed only on the downhills, but you still have to climb back up. Guys are going to need a double ring for the uphill downhill aspect, but they're also going to need uh, chain retention. So, and then yes, there are some people that want a single ring uh, if their terrain. They can tune the one ring to their terrain and always ride the same terrain, then a one ring system is fine. ISCG tabs work really well for that. The other is, is we bent the down tube. This is, uh, this is not just a trend, uh, trying to keep up with the you know Joneses and the Janes, etc. But we wanted to have clearance for a remote or a piggyback reservoir shocks. And as you'll see when we get over to the Sultan, the uh, uh, we've got a, an optional Monarch Plus piggyback reservoir shock on there, and that's a um, you know it's a step up. It's more of an all mountain shock. So when you put that on a five-spot class bike with a dropper post and a you know a little bit bigger set of tires, uh, maybe even a fork if you want the extra weight, now you got something that you know can scorch some runs at Downeyville or you know the Alps or wherever uh, through the rocks really really quickly um, and be able to deal with the, the heat, uh, you know, additional oil volume, etc. Then the coup de gras that all bikes from Turner from now on will have is the 142 by 12 through axle. Well, I shouldn't say all Turner bikes will have because the DHR doesn't have a 142. It's got a obviously a 150 through axle. But there are no more bikes in the Turner line that have quick release rear ends. That's a road bike thing. Um, yes, it does improve stiffness. I can feel it. Uh, will everybody feel it? I don't know. Wheel flex has a bigger impact probably on it than, than a well adjusted quick release. A high quality quick release. But um, there's a lot of crappy quick releases out there with you know plastic cams exposed to contamination. You're not really getting this, uh, the true amount of torque that you think you are by the pressure in the palm of your hand. This system um, 
you know, basically with the extra diameter through the frame. The Maxil, we like it because you have an expanding feature that locks into the left dropout. So in addition to getting some uh, lateral compression, you're actually getting some radial uh, expansion, basically like a pinch bolt in reverse. So it does help the rear end. We use uh, NV wheels on a lot of our bikes. It's our, uh, we're one of the, uh, I don't want to say, one of the larger OE customers, uh, probably not the largest, but um, certainly big fans of the NV stuff. It's a really stiff wheel. When I went, my same set of NV wheels, which are very laterally stiff, to, uh, from a quick release to the uh, 142 by 12 prototype, I can definitely feel the difference in rear wheel tracking. And uh, that pretty much sums up the five spot uh, revision. Oh, one thing, the, uh, we also changed the gusset on the five spot because of the, we had to put a, a little bend in the tube up here. This frame has plenty of clearance for a Fox 36 or a RockShox Lyric Class Fork, zero stack lower headset and the fork turned sideways. So in order to do that and have clearance and not hit the down tube, we had to give it a little bend here and then also a new um, gusset. So the Flux is uh, got more changes than the Rock or the uh, excuse me the uh, Five Spot and the Sultan. We uh, put the 44 millimeter head tube on the Flux this year, which will allow use of the uh, tapered steer tube forks. Nice carbon crowns from RockShox or the, I believe the titanium uh, one piece upper that uh, Fox has got in development. Um, the uh, top tube was increased in diameter for more rigidity from front to back. Uh, the, the Flux is a pretty light, um, light trail bike or a uh, occasional racer. Um, you can easily build them under 24 pounds, and that's uh, for most people that's a pretty good race weight. But one thing we wanted to do was increase uh, the rigidity. Um, one thing that better tires, better brakes today, we're able to push even cross country or light trail bikes harder. So with the addition of the 44 millimeter head tube with the stiffer uh, fork steer and crown interface, then put a little bit bigger diameter top tube in it, then onto the rear axle, which of course is 142 by 12. The flux just gave uh, quite a bit of rigidity in the trail feel. Uh, this is just a, a DHR axle. We didn't have enough of the, the new Maxil lights for the rear end for the show, but it will have a quick release on the back end. This just for, for show. Uh, no, no uh, concession for piggyback clearance on the flux. It's still just a straight top tube, very traditional. And there is no ISCG this time. I figured most of the guys on this bike are still going to be very traditional, cross-country minded uh, riders, not really interested in Super D or whatever. Did the uh, flux gain any weight? Yeah, I did. I just don't know what it did. I just know that because obviously this this dropout's a little bit uh, bulkier than you know the quick release version replaced, and then of course the top tube a little bit bigger in diameter. Even though we tried to keep the wall thin, we didn't want to go so thin that you know if it just fall over on the 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 broom pile in the garage, then at the top tube, it's still uh, you know got a, a little bit of weight gain there, but. Uh, uh, now onto the Sultan. Like the five spot, it's got the uh, um, more clearance at the head tube, down tube junction. This will allow the, uh, now this is shown with the Fox 34 on here. Uh, if somebody wants to run it up to like a 140 travel or install the RockShox Revelation 140 that doesn't want the full 20 millimeter increase in length over the um, design spec 120 travel fork, you can run a zero stack lower race, which will buy you back about, you know, depending on the headset, roughly 15 millimeters. Um, and you'll still have clearance when the fork turns and not hit the, uh, the frame with the top of the, the adjusters. Uh, so we dent that. We, of course, changed the cable routing. 
reservoir clearance. Here you can see that we're showing the optional Monarch Plus uh, more oil capacity than a typical cross-country shot, more adjustability because of the oil flow from the um, you know the inline part of the shock to the piggyback reservoir. So you obviously have some valving in here, uh, which we can you know obviously spec through. Uh, testing with RockShock, and we have done, but also now with the, there's a lever on the right side here with, uh, you know, multiple positions so you can adjust on the fly. Real simple. Um, now we have piggy clearance, piggyback reservoir. The Sultan also has the ISCG taps, as does the uh, five spot. Again, this bike is not, you know, it, it was never designed when we went from version one Sultan to the DW Link Sultan in 2009. You know, the travel jumped up. We didn't, um, didn't really, by jumping up the travel, kind of reposition it as more of a trail bike. So with trail bikes now being more capable than ever, the speeds are higher and ISCG taps are good. And then of course, through, uh, through axle dropout with the incorrect axle, but it will take the quick release once we get the shipment from RockShock. Now we'd have no more zip ties all the way up, super clean. Um, colors, all the bikes come in raw with black vinyl stickers, real traditional looking. Black anodizing with laser etching, or this year the Sultan is blue anno, the Flux red anno, the five spot orange and the DHR green. So they all have one that's kind of a subdued bling and then obviously black and raw for the very subdued colors. <laughs> and Dave, the question all the Turner homers oh, want to I know. Oh, I forgot about it. Yes. The RFX. The RFX, yes, the RFX. Um, well, I was riding one Sunday. Um, we are working on it. Uh, big challenge is, well, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, one is uh, cost. Um, we do want to make it affordable. And in, uh, what else? Not quite sure where the product, uh, what do you, how do I word this? The target, basically. That, I know it sounds silly, but it's really the hardest bike to design. You know, designing a DHR is easy, right? It's a downhill race bike. It's not for, you know, uh, hucking off of loading docks and anything like that. It's take it to the top of the mountain, go as fast as you can down. Get to the bottom, get to the top, check your time, do it again. That's It's a race bike. Real simple, easy to come up with geometry. All the, uh, all the attributes of that bike are very focused. You know, the Flux, light trail bike, not a big deal. Sultan, five spot, similar. They're trail bikes. They fit in a really, pretty much a smaller thing. Where the RFX starts bridging from a five spot class bike to a DHR. So that's a great big span. Being a small company, we've only got a, uh, six full time employees. So it's not like we got, you know, buckets of money to go pissing away on, uh, you know, two or three models in between the five spot and the DHR. So we have to make sure that, you know, the one model that we try to place in the middle there fits a lot of people. And the reality is, is that the five spot is now taken over and surpassed anything that the old RFX ever did. It's superior geometry, slacker heading, a lower bottom bracket, uh, the top tube length is just right. It's got a through axle, it's got an ISCG tab, um, and it pedals notably better uh, with the DW link than any of the, uh, the previous RFXs. So for all you guys that, and riders, uh, girls out there that are happy with the old RFX, then the five spot today will be plenty. For you guys looking for a all mountain slash free ride bike, you know, that's the hard target to hit with the RFX. And that's kind of what we're trying to develop, a more cost effective uh, answer to all the, you know, all the other stuff that's on the market.
So it's a tough target to hit. And uh, I don't know, there's a lot of good uh, advice, you know, on MTBR. I follow the forum, I listen, I read. Um, a lot of the guys on the forum have my personal email, they contact me. You know, I, um, and that's kind of what's uh, given a direction to the product. But development time, you know, two years ago, just to kind of rehash this a little bit, two years ago we showed up with a bike with the shock that had a forward tilt to the top of it. That bike rode really nice, but it wasn't really manufacturable. It had too many issues. It had issues, yeah. Uh, it rode nice, but to produce it would have been more expensive than the DHR, and it would have, it had a... Um, problems with how everything fit together and trying to get the you know bicycle the rider and the frame or the drive train I should say all to, to be happy together so out the window that went then another year was uh, um, spent creating a new design machining all the parts welding it up and getting it here last year then we rode that all through the fall and uh, made some tweaks to it and then we ended up uh, finding out that it would cost within $100 retail of the DHR. Well there's nobody that I can think of, okay maybe there's eight of you out there, but my minimum order is way way more than eight with any factory. So basically the uh, at $3,050 projected retail for that frame, obviously that stopped that project. So, we start over in January of 2011. Uh, got more prototypes just a couple of weeks ago, been riding those, they ride nice, but by no means are they ready for production. So, you don't see one here. And until it's ready, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend my money on it because I don't think you'll spend your money. On it. So that's kind of where it's at. Okay, great. Thanks for your time, Dave. Hey, not a problem. Thanks for your time. Thanks.